right, so we are doing problem number, what is it, 12? Yeah. All right, which deals with a jet on a catapult on, I guess, a, an aircraft carrier. Nope, this is not a jet. It's being used just for purposes of illustration. All right, so now, over the as the uh, plane takes off, it moves a distance. Uh, we'll use D this time. 87 meters. Okay? While it is taking off, it has two forces acting on it. It has the thrust of its own jet engines. Right here, these propeller-looking things are actual jet engines. All right, so that's going to be, we'll call it the, uh, let's just call it T for thrust. All right, and at the same time, we have force exerted C by the catapult. I'm not sure it says in the book, but we're assuming those are both parallel to the displacement of the jet as it takes off. All right? At, we also have, at the end of the situation, we are given a kinetic energy. All right? So what do we know about work and kinetic energy, the relationship between them? Assuming that the plane starts from rest, we know that work is equal to, this is the network, which is the work done by uh, T and C. We'll put those in there in a second. Work is equal to change in kinetic energy. Okay? So for our purposes, this means the work done by thrust plus the work done by the catapult is going to be equal to, one. well, let's just do kinetic energy because we don't have to worry about speed. So we're going to have kinetic energy final minus kinetic energy initial. Assuming that the jet starts from rest, what's our initial kinetic energy? Zero. All right. So now we know that the work done by the catapult, which is what we're being asked for, right? So now, just doing a little algebra, work done by catapult is going to be equal to the final kinetic energy minus the work done by thrust. Okay? So what is the work done by the catapult? Let's figure it out. What is the kinetic energy? Well, you know what? Let's, let's move on. We've got to do, um, do this and break that down a little bit more uh, so we can put in numbers that we're given. Work done by thrust is equal to uh, thrust dot displacement is equal to kinetic energy minus T D cosine of what? Zero. Cosine of zero, which is equal to one. Okay? So we'll just leave it like there. Okay? That would be cosine of theta, but since it's one, we'll just leave it. Okay? So now we know that well, now we're down to things that we're given. Alright? So now the work done by the catapult is equal to the kinetic energy which is given, which was how many zillions of joules? 4.5 times 10 to the 7 joules. 45 megajoules. All right, minus thrust, which is how many newtons? 2.7. Times 10 to the what? Times 10 to the 5th newton times our distance, which is 87 meters. All right, dimensional analysis works out, of course. Newton meter is a joule, kilogram meter squared per second squared. Here's joules here. We're looking for work, which is also energy work, both measured in joules. All right, now we just plug some numbers or do some math. We've already plugged the numbers in. So 45 megajoules, uh, just uh, do that. Somebody do that. Calculator people. It's got to be most of it because, look, this is, uh, so this is going to be in the order of 10 to the, well, close 10 to the 7th, small 10 to the 7th. 2.5 times 10 to the 7th. All right, so 2.5 times 10 to the 7th joules is going to be the work done by the catapult. Now, wasn't part of the problem, but let's do a quick extension. Two quick extensions, and we'll do those separately uh, on a different video. But here, first extension is... What is the average force exerted by the catapult? Second question is, what is the, do we have the mass of the jet? Ah, yeah. uh, rats. Okay. Mm, no, I'm not going to because I know that I'll be leaving close. All right. So let's go ahead and just do that. What is the average force exerted by the catapult? You guys work on that for a second, and then we'll solve it on the board when you're done. That's all. Woo! Yeah. Michael B. 